We have had a doozy of a day. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Welcome to the Horror Basement and Beyond. I'm Johnny. We've got Tim Jam here. we got Greg with us today. And we have a movie of the week, once again, and uh, it's going to be Spiral. A Book of Saw. Is that what it is? A yeah. Book of Saw? Yeah. Just finished that this morning. Um, also, a little Toxic Avenger news. We all love Toxic Avenger. Uh, Greg, you love Toxic Avenger, right? Of course. Yes. Yeah, that's what I figured. And, uh, we have some news from I Am Legend screenwriter. Yeah, yeah that's going to be just kind of funny to me. Uh, but uh, Jim Jam went to Camp Nightmare on yep. August 13th. Uh, I've been back to the movies. I went and watched Don't Breathe 2 last night or yesterday, and I really enjoyed that movie. That was a good movie. Like, uh, it don't carry the same storyline. You know what I'm saying? It's the same guy, but not the same story. So, just, you know, if you wanted that storyline to continue somehow, it, it don't. <laughs> Is it, it's not a prequel or nothing? No, 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 no. Not that I know of. It didn't seem so like a prequel. A, a more teenagers fucking with a blind No, kid. no. It's not even teenagers. It's, uh, he finds a girl on the road, like a little four-year-old girl, and he takes her in and raises her. As his own, because you know he was lonely. He wanted a, a daughter or a kid, right? Remember that? Yeah. Well, then it's eight years after that he finds her, and then her parents kind of end up on her, and then there's a twist. And that's all I'm gonna say. I, I enjoyed it. He, it it was pretty good. Uh, it I would I didn't stay for the end credit, so I'm gonna say it probably finalized the whole Don't Breathe franchise thing. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I don't know. I've been back to the movies a lot, so that's the fourth movie I've watched in two weeks. Hopefully it don't revert back to how it was at the beginning of 2020. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm worried about, because I got the Brigo Unlimited Pass again, and so uh, I went and watched Old. Uh, that was an interesting movie, M. Not Shyamalan, if you like M. Not Shyamalan. Uh, I I liked it, and I watched uh, The Jungle Cruise, only because I couldn't watch The Green Knight. And the Green Knight was super weird. That's a weird movie. I thought you did watch the Green. Knight. I did, but that first time I went, oh. I would have never went. I would have never watched the Jungle Cruise. But I'm kind of glad I did because that was actually a fun movie. So. I've watched Suicide Squad three times, dude. I would. I'm thinking about going and watching the Suicide Squad on the big screen because I've already watched it at home. Well, you might and, as well. Uh, yeah, it, there there is a little Lloyd Kaufman cameo. Speaking of Toxic Avenger. And, and um in Suicide Squad? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I must have missed it's, it. It's it's great to see James Gunn did, get to do like what he was brought up in, like the trauma. Like it's a very like you can tell he has trauma roots. So yeah, if I remember right from uh, hearing uh, Joe Lynch talk, so yeah, uh James Gunn did work in yeah. uh, with he worked with Trauma. Yeah. Trauma, okay. So that's where he got mm. his start. Hey, and speaking yep. of the Suicide Squad, that's probably one of the better DC movies I've seen. Besides out, besides the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, but I don't... Is that it's, hard, it's hard for me to correlate that movie with DC Universe for some reason. like I'm, That movie seems like it was a standalone movie, and then it was like, hey, we can put the Joker in this. Does it... Uh, yeah. It don't even reference Batman or nothing, does it? No, no. Well, Bruce Wayne, but... Yeah. Oh, okay. I never watched it. Oh, it's a good movie. That it's well worth. Is it called just Joker? Yeah, Joker. Okay. And but the oh, Suicide yeah, Squad was was a. I, I it was really entertaining to me. I, I mean, I'm yeah. just it's just hard for me to get past John Cena's goofy looking ass. Well, no, but no, no. get great. past it. Yes, <laughs> get past it because it turns out his stupid looking helmet <laughs> is dumb. But uh, is it was. It's like man, he 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 did a really good. He does a good job. Yeah, you know? he has some some just amazing lines to to hear yeah. come out of the mouth of John Cena. It's, it's great. Um, 
Speaking of DC, though, my son just recently he messaged me while we was uh, we was gone uh, to Camp Nightmare, and he asked me. He said, "Hey, when you get back, can you take me to the comic book shop? I want to look at some comics." So he just started uh, reading just some DC comics. Where's the comic book shop? So you know where that place is called the church. Okay, so it's on the square. It's right across. Yeah, is, the, that, uh, is that actually open? It's called Everscape. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. Yeah, uh, they they had uh right now they're doing free comics. Uh, they got some comics in there that are free, but uh and then they got back issues or for some are like twenty five cents. You want to get some, but you know of course uh, he didn't want to start out in the middle of a series. No. So I, I we went and asked that. the guy, and he he pointed us to some ones that just started, and. uh He's got a subscription service that you can do where you fill out an application and he'll pull the each one as they come out and they'll email you when you come in and you just go in and pick it up. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, so. I guess that's what's good about a local comic shop, though. They're willing to, you know, get it into your hands instead of. Yeah, you know, so. I wouldn't, we didn't have a comic shop when I grew up. Luckily, you know, like new comics that come out are only like four bucks a piece. So it's not like it's an expensive thing. Unless he gets to the point where he's wanting to start getting like, yeah, but don't they come out like every week? Well, is it a weekly issue or is it? Well, the one one of them he said he got was a monthly. Okay, one. monthly. Yeah, I think they do monthly and bi monthly now. Okay, that that and was anyone, always my problem. Like the the news I've been kind of following comic wise, if you're wanting to like get started on something, is Todd McFarlane is trying to create like the. The Marvel Universe, but for Spawn. Oh yeah. So he's starting a new comic called Spawn's Universe, and it's gonna supposedly like build up to this huge like Marvel Universe style thing. So that's that's just starting. That'd that's be interesting. Cool. Yeah, that's actually. I'm pretty sure uh, he would actually. They would. Act, someone would actually uh, probably try to put that as a movie, wouldn't they? Well, I mean, he's he's supposedly making a new That's Spawn movie. That's what I thought, but That's haven't heard really dark heard and gritty. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I would look forward to a rated R Spawn. Was, wow. there, was that one back in the day? Was it not a rated R? I don't think so. But the it, the HBO the HBO animated series I thought really nailed it. It yeah, was really to, good. I've been meaning to watch that. Was that newer? Was that out from back in like? It's back in the day, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty old. There was three seasons, yeah. and uh, it's, I mean, it's animated, but it's definitely not for kids. It's pretty yeah. gruesome. I love uh, uh, anime, or, you know, animation, whatever, cartoons, whatever you want to call them now, uh, that are not meant for kids. Like, yeah. did, you ever, did you watch Invincible? On, oh, and, yeah, yeah, it dude, was really good. I really enjoyed that. I was like, hell, this is brutal. Like fuck yeah, <laughs> and but he always it, got he's invincible, but he always got his ass kicked every fucking oh, yeah. time. And so, I was uh, I was skeptical of getting into another superhero like type show because I had just tried to watch that what is it Jupiter Rising? Yeah, or, I watched that. I I couldn't get into that, and then uh, that I think weird. it was my son actually told me I needed to watch Invincible, and I loved it. Yeah, that Jupiter Rising wasn't weird. It was it was. It was okay. It was good just to have something on to watch, you know, because there's so much out there. The Boys is really good. If, yeah. If, I mean, that's just like just a gruesome superhero show. That I like it like that. Like, that it's like it's reality. Really yeah, reality. Like, this is what would happen if superheroes were real. Oh, The Boys is actually live action, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes it even better. Is that on too. Amazon Prime? Yeah. Yeah, I might be telling the fuck. Yeah, you definitely... If, you haven't checked that out, but uh, so yeah, um, so yeah, he's in the comics now. That's good. So I'll be uh, taking him up there, you know, every so often, pick up some new comics. Um, yeah. Arl Stein has a comic book out. Oh, really? I can't remember the name of it, but they had a free one out, and I picked that up. And Ashton's been looking at it, so ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So what's up with this camp nightmare thing? What what happened? There? Well, Carol Moore and Erica. McElroy, yeah, McElroy, uh, they put it on, um, it, uh, can't even remember where it was at, but, uh, Standing, um, Standing Stone State Park, yeah, yeah, that one, something like that, I forgot it right here, 
Standing Stone State Park in uh, Hillam, T Hillam, Tennessee. So it was close to Dale's Hollow Lake. Uh, you know where that is, Greg? Yep. Dale's Hollow. Yeah, it's close to that. Um, is that, they rented is that out past Cookville? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they uh, they rented out a uh, they got a lodge up there that they rent out. You know, you can go to Standing Stone, I guess their website, and you can rent out a lodge, and it has like bunks in it. So it has a, a crap ton of bunks. It's got showers. It's got a big uh, uh, mess hall, a huge industrial kitchen. But you can rent that whole place out, and uh, and it's it's pretty damn cool, man. Uh, they uh, set up a little scavenger hunt where, you know, they set up little um, clue spots that are like scenes from like Friday the Thirteenth or something, where you had to dip, find the clues. But while you're doing that, though. You got Jason lurking in the woods. So they had someone called the scribe. They would write the clues down. And you had, and that, which I was a lookout with the other, two other people. And we wa we just looked out or watched to make sure while they're trying to get the clues together. And uh, of course, you know, it makes it a lot harder when you got Jason coming after you. But of course, you know, you're, you're not really not getting hurt or anything unless you fall over <laughs> but um they had uh, flag football belts on or that's what we was wearing and you got two lives so when jason come up to you that's what he's going for he's going to he's snatch off the flag so i lost one though i lost one life so i, I got injured but it was funny because my wife was looking at a clue and and jason walked up and she was like and it's fucking cut out running. And, you know, she's, she, it was funny. She was running like that. And our camp counselor, because we all had a signed camp counselor. And our camp counselor, uh, when we got done, he said, like, Amy's face was priceless when Jason walked up on her. She, he just like, she just like froze. It was like, and then, fucking Scooby Doo style, cut out running. But, uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I actually was running from Jason, and he got up on me, and I was trying to juke and jive, and big boys don't juke and jive well, and he got me. Uh, we had some, we had a, there was a couple of casualties, uh, two women, they, uh, they, one of them sacrificed her, uh, her life for her group, and her group actually won. Oh, so, well, that was very noble of her. And then when you die, you get headbands that said dead. <laughs> you get to keep the headband? I don't know. I don't know. They probably Just keep kidding. them. They probably keep all this stuff for... Yeah, the, this is thing. supposed to be a, uh, anniversary, uh, an annual. Annual. There you go. An annual thing. So they've already posted in the, the little event page that be looking out for, um, you know, for the few, the next one. Uh, information for it so yeah this was mainly family family and friends type thing because this is the first time they did it so there was a lot of kinks and stuff to work out but pretty much you know it was you know uh when you're in the woods you're gonna count encounter hills and stuff so it was a bit of a a hike but you know if you you feel like you can't do that, you probably shouldn't. But I hear that they're planning on doing other themes besides uh, Friday the 13th. I think I heard maybe Evil Dead. So I'm curious to see how that would work. That would be pretty cool. I don't see how, I don't see Evil Dead needing to have a, a uphill scavenger hunt. You could probably do that just around where you are. I don't know how they would work that out. You know, that was just thrown up in, as an idea. Um, well, um, in what Jason movie, is there an uphill run from Jason? Well, I, get, well, I mean, just, do just, they have roots no. <laughs> sticking out? I just want to know, is there a way that, like, you could stun Jason and, like, uh, he had to, like, stand there for so long? No. What, what if he had flags and when you pulled one, he, he like you said, he'd have to... Well, the, uh, that's that's the cool yeah. thing you said that I can I can you know relay that to Carol, 
And but maybe, you'd have to be able to sneak up on Jason. And maybe, you know, I'll relay, I'll relay that to them. Maybe that's something they can think about doing. Because, like I said, they, would, want, they wanted feedback from everybody after to see what they needed to fix and all this. Because if you think about it, like you said, the one girl sacrificed herself. But what if one person went after Jason? Like you know what I'm saying? To, yeah, well, to try to get one of his flags to stun him so it would give a different dynamic instead of just always running away. Like the one person is going to stand up. You know, you always got to stand up and fight. Maybe Jason has like five or six flags or something since he's yeah super. Or like maybe you find like a you know like a, a hatchet or something in the woods and that gives you like you, get, you know yeah, the ability you can just show to the attack hatchet Jason. And yeah, he's just like oh, I don't know. Right. Or <laughs> what if you was to get or you the, throw it at him? It's like a foam hatchet. You throw it at him. You hit him. Then he's stunned. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're not trying to. Well, which you probably get some dumbass out there that would want to throw it as hard as they can. You yeah, know, they, they they don't want to hurt the actor either. Yeah, so. I mean, so Cause I was saying something about what if we throw water on them and the counselor was like, "Don't throw nothing at them." Nerf guns. That's I, what you need. I imagine that guy's probably got to be in pretty good shape too to be chasing oh. everyone all night. Oh yeah, he he was a tall, skinny dude. He was a cool guy. He was quiet, but uh, man, this motherfucker, he was walking. It really felt like he was in a Jason movie. Because we was running as fast, well, not really as fast as we could. I, I wasn't about to run as fast as I could, but I was running pretty good. We was all running, and every time we look back, this motherfucker's gaining on us, no matter how much we're look, we're running. And he had tall, he was tall and had long legs, so I think that probably helped too. But but yeah, he played, the, he played it was the Jason from Part 6, the tall, skinny one that had the, like the... Pouches pouches and stuff so yeah he uh i think that was from the one where tommy jarvis resurrects him right or something yeah, like I that think so old tommy jarvis yeah but yeah man I, it was a fun weekend man you know we had spaghetti friday night for dinner they did uh trivia also they had friday the 13th trivia and you um and if you won the trivia you got all kinds of stuff you got a couple posters, just some other things that they, you know, put together. But when you get in there, though, because it, it was $150 a person for this weekend or this one night event. And uh, when you come in, you got, we got, I wish I'd have brought it up here, but it's, uh, I think I posted it on, my wife might have posted it on our social media, but it's a Camp Crystal Lake uh, bag. Uh, and we had, and of course, it had this shirt in it. Had some snacks and like stuff. a goodie bag. A little goodie bag. It had a map. It was like an NES style map from the video game back in the day. That's um, pretty cool. Oh yeah. Then uh, you also got a screen printed poster from the event. So this was not your regular poster. It had three different colors layered on it, and it was apparently from some up and coming artists. And all and apparently this artist is. Uh, all his work is going for like two or three hundred dollars right now. So if you was to hold on to this and keep it in good shape, you could have a you know a thousand dollar or more art piece. And we got two of them. So I ordered a poster frame, and I'm going to put both of them in that poster frame. So you know one you know they both stay. You know, I'm going to hang it up somewhere up here. But. Uh, but uh, it's it was pretty it was really cool, man. You know, I've always seen stuff like this, but it was like in Arizona or something, and right. uh, it was actually it was a lot of fun to do. You know, get to sleep in bunk beds and all that, which them the mattresses wasn't too bad. It was actually pretty. But man, when you're a bigger person, them bunks, man, you got about this much room between the top bunk and the mattress, so you ain't got much room. You couldn't just sit up real quick. Plus, there's a bar coming down at a V that was about midways down. So you slam your head on that if you try to get up real quick. Yeah. It was, that yeah, bar coming down with the V is probably from bigger people getting on top of that bunk and it's just stretch that bar out and bend it down. Because I remember you sleep on, somebody sleeps on top and it sinks in even more. <laughs> yeah. Then you're hitting springs. But, uh, and buttons. One of the many reasons I try to stay out of prison. Yeah, bunk beds. Hell yeah, yeah. good uh, good idea. Yeah. yeah, man, it's a it was a fun weekend. Um, 
you know, didn't get much sleep because when you sleep in a big uh, thing like that with a bunch of different people, you have people that snore, and uh, yeah, they'll keep you up. So I would recommend probably bringing some earplugs. You don't want to hear people snoring, or some headphones, and you can play some ambient noises or something. But uh, yeah, so when uh, I will be sure to, because I think the next event will probably be more for public. So I think it, it will probably sell out pretty quick uh, if the public is there, because this is more of a private event. But uh, the next one's going to be probably more public to the public. So, yeah, be looking out for more info on that one. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very what cool. you got on? Speaking of some ugly guys. Yeah, so uh, the filming of Toxic Avenger has ramped. The Avenger, Toxic Avenger remake. Um, is this making it, Blair? Is it coming from trauma though? Uh, I don't know if it's. I don't. Know. I mean, I trauma would own the rights to it, so you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure about all that. I'm just saying that that it's coming out, I, or that they finished wrap. They wrapped up the uh, what's it called? Elijah Woods in it. Oh, oh nice. Are you gonna play the Toxic Avenger? The one that before he gets Oh, that's a good question. I wanna look it up on IMDB Pro. You guys remember the Toxic Avenger cartoon? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kaufman and hers will produce a new take on Trauma's classic, so, so it's directed by like you said, Macon Blair. Yeah, so I so, imagine it's gonna be a trauma. I mean it'd have to be I, I wonder, what? I haven't seen any, like, I haven't recently watched a trauma film. Is Joe Ritter, is he a part of trauma as well? I do not know. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a big trauma buff. Well, like, I just remember Toxic Avenger as a kid and loving it. You well, Lloyd Kaufman, is, uh, he's a writer and producer on it. Yeah, so. Oh, well, he's, it's his character, so I guess it's just, he gets the credit for that because he come up with the character or whatever. But uh, let me see what else it says about it. But. It's still, uh, I, I'm more curious, do you think it would make it to theaters? Um, and uh, just what the feel of it would be if it's going to be like shot in HD. You know what I'm saying? Like, And how yeah. much practical effects are there? Because if they don't use just practical effects and a whole lot of fucking CGI shit, nobody, it, it's going to get a bad, bad review. I think it's good timing though because of like how well Psycho Goreman did. Yeah, I still haven't and watched that. I've been meaning to watch that movie. It says it's very a, trauma esque. It says March twelfth was pre production and then August fifth was filming. Well, it's wrapped, so they're done. So that was the last update they had. Yeah, so they're done. Uh, which I mean, I'm excited to see what it will look like. I'm just more, maybe not excited, curious. Because the problem is, is like when you try to take an original and then, you know, everyone's remaking everything. Kevin Bacon is in it. Did you say that? No, I said Elijah Wood. Oh, Kevin Bacon is in it as well. Maybe he's playing Toxic Avenger. Peter Dinklage. Did you say that? Peter Dinklage. Yeah. Um, but it don't, so it's got like yeah, major it's, stars in it. Um, yeah, it's not saying names of... Uh, what they what characters are playing yet though? So it, major stars are tied to it, which is unusual That's, for a trauma movie. It seems like I, I'm I'm not I could be wrong on that though. Well, a lot of actors got their start in trauma movies, right? I have no clue. I think Tiffany Shepherd, which she's not a major star, but Tiffany Shepherd, she she her first film know. was was it Tromeo and Juliet? Mm. I have no clue. Like yeah, I, said, I'm not, I don't know many I'm actors a, that came from trauma, but I'm not a big trauma buff. I just know I like the talk of Toxic Avenger. That was, that was I'm not, we did a movie of the week, right? One time, yeah. That was it, a, pretty, a, that's a goofy movie, uh, though. Yeti interviewed Lloyd at uh, Full Moon Cineplex. Oh, that was time. funny. Yeti was tripping. You know, he was starstruck, I guess, because of course it was Lloyd. But uh, yeah, yeah, Lloyd's a super I like, nice uh, guy. You know, Sergeant Kabuki Man and. Uh, my my favorite trauma film is probably Terror Firmer. 
If you guys haven't seen Terror from yeah, her, I haven't seen it. definitely check it out. I'm pretty much just stuck with Toxic Avenger on it. Like, and I watched all of them as a kid. I don't know how. I don't know how I got a hold of them. Right. Like, I don't know how I got a hold of many freaking horror movies. Well, they were probably that I watched because as a kid. You, when you go to the Watching video store back in the yeah. day, or they played a lot of trauma on USA, didn't they? It's probably the unedited or the edited version, you know. Yeah. Yeah, just that early 90s, like, Troma, they were doing well. Yeah, because when the cartoon come out, I mean, you know, I don't think it lasted long, but I still liked it from what I remember. But I really loved cartoons. I I could just watch cartoons all day back when I was a kid. I was watching cartoons until I was freaking in high school. Like, get home, and when cartoons come on at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and you're at home, bless you. I mean, they had video games and everything for Toxic Avenger. Like, it was a big push. Oh, yeah. So, like, if you go to an event with Lloyd Kaufman, uh, he'll he'll reach out to someone in that area to come play Toxic or Toxic Mm -hmm. or whatever. So, that's always cool. Like, if you're a trauma fan or Toxic Avenger, uh, when he comes to your town, you might get to play Toxic. That's always pretty cool. I mean, I guess. if If you like dressing up. (laughs) <laughs> but you think he sanitized that mask because he used the same mask for anybody? I'd hope he sprayed something in there. Years. I mean, if I'm playing the Toxic Avenger, I don't think I want it to be clean. True. Yeah. I'd want it to be grimy. Have your face just sm- <laughs> spread yeah. all against everybody else's old sweat. Yeah, I want I want the full effect. Get in there and like yes, it make it smell bad. Oh man, this really feels like toxic. Yeah, I mean, if it smelled good, like I don't, could you even get in the character? No, you're tr- that's right. You're true about, or that's true. Um, <clears throat> but let's see what uh, that's uh. Speaking of, and we're gonna talk about the I Am Legend thing. Uh, it's funny because people. And I don't care what side of the fence you stand on. This is just stupid to me uh, as far as the vaccine goes. But people are using I Am Legend as a thing that was real and that the vaccine will cause you to be a zombie. And people believe that that movie was real. That they're like, oh, this is going to happen to me. because, it, and, and they're saying that the vaccine was the reason why they were uh, zombies. But in actuality, it was a modified virus. That made people zombies. It wasn't a vaccine. But come on. Completely like, ridiculous. I, I'm down with conspiracy theories. Like, don't get me wrong. I love conspiracy theories. But if you're using a movie, like the screenwriter had to come out and say, It's fake. I made it up. <laughs> like I had to tweet that out. For, and it's just come on, man. Like uh, if, that, if we're gonna use uh, Will Smith movies, can we at least like do Independence Day or something? And or Man that's in a Black. Fun. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's actually I think kind of real though. There, I think there really is Men in Black, aren't there? Well, yeah. that started in '66 yeah. with the yeah. Mothman stuff. Well, right. Yeah, yeah I imagine there's some sort. I like of that one better. I like that one better, Men in Black. Or in, well, I don't want Independence Day because. They're hostile, but at least the men in black, they're like trying to live with us and stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, in Independence Day, you just sneeze on them, right? Wasn't it it, wasn't it a virus or something that took them out? How'd they kill the aliens and that? I no, 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 they, they shot through the... the, the up yours? Yeah, the, up yours, they would go through the middle Randy and, Quaid. and it would blow their ship up. Yeah. I'm not sure about the virus. That I'm not sure if that was the only way... But the one that sneezed on them, or the the water one, was from signs. Oh, I where you get I them wet, where you get them wet. You don't and... like signs. I I have such issues with that movie. Oh, Jimmy went to the theater and watched it three times. Yeah, I, I really love that movie. Uh, just explain to me why a invading alien race that dies in contact with water would come to this planet. Most of it's covered in water, right? Maybe, I mean, that's uh, a... maybe because we're the one of the only living uh, 
like civilizations out there or something. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Between but, that and the the swing away scene, I just I couldn't do it. I guess that's your typical uh, M Night Shyamalan twist. He he wants to do in all his movies now. Like the one movie that pissed me off was The Village from him. I still didn't. I didn't know when I watched that movie. I I don't think I realized he was the director of that movie or the writer. The guy in the guard check. No, I'm just saying. I don't oh. know if I realized that he. Maybe until I seen because I haven't watched that movie. I've watched it once. I haven't seen it in forever, so I'm not even sure if I knew it was his movie or not. I don't know. You like Lady in the Water, right? Yeah, I really enjoyed Lady, but that's. I don't think a lot of people did. You uh-huh. like that one, Lady in the Water? Yeah, I think uh, I don't think I ever got through it. Not for any fault of the movie or anything. Just you know, probably fell asleep watching it and didn't get back to it. Yeah, only I think I like that movie for the fact it's a like a bedtime story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's a take on a bedtime story. And it's just like okay, you know, and everybody's I mean, there for Paul a reason. Giamatti, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I like yeah. that guy. Yeah, and, and he and I, I really like him in movies. So, I right, would y'all say the happening is one of his worst ones. When Mother Nature kills everybody, everybody hated it, but I don't. It didn't bother me as much as everybody else, though. So I don't. I, a lot you of know, movies don't bother me as everybody else. I have I have a love hate relationship with that guy because I kind of hate like the whole twist aspect that you know, he feels he has to put in everything, but like style wise and set up, like he's he's good. Yeah. Well if you, you know? watched old, you'd have Old's a good movie. Not sure if I'll watch it again. But it was worth the one watch in a theater. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. Uh that, if that makes any sense. Was somebody here? Um, but yeah. Uh, speaking of strange movies, um, do you watch that Lamb trailer? I did. And uh, when I, I think I went and watched old or one of the movies, they had that trailer in the theater. And uh, if y'all don't know what this is, uh, the synopsis is a childless couple, Maria and Ing- Ingbar, discover a mysterious newborn on their farmland or farm in Iceland. The unexpected prospect of family life brings them much joy before ultimately destroying them. And it's a horror movie, I guess, or a thriller of some sort, but it's... Is it implied that he was fucking the sheep? I don't... <laughs> is that implied? Sure that, that that will probably play into it somehow, but I thought it looked really cool. Yeah, but I was just like, are we, are we there? Like, is it going to have... A human body with the sheep head, so it's he fucked the sheep, right? Or is it just some sort of genetic mutation? I mean, after Serbian film, everyone just says fuck it, right? We just do whatever we want. Like <laughs> no one cares anymore. And, and to see that on the like a theater, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, is it actually going to theaters? It was in a trailer at the theater, so I took it, it as looks, you, it you saw this really in a movie. Well I saw this. I've seen it first online or on something. Is that why you brought it back up? Because you saw yes. it yes this weekend. I seen it when I think I went. I went and watched old or wow. some other movie. Like, and I was just like, and there's other people in there, and I'm like, main bestiality is coming mainstream, man. Yeah, and man. I was just, I was just like, man, I wonder if these old people. Because the, when I went and watched old, it was all older people. Well, the way the fucking it's world weird. is going nowadays, hell, I'm surprised they wasn't like, hey, it's legal now to fuck animals. Go ahead and do it. One, of the, one of the things that stuck out to me in that trailer, though, is just how well done yes. it looks. Like it looks like it is a really well done movie. That's what I was thinking. I was like, and, and it could possibly be if it does come to theater locally, where my local Regal is, might be one of the first films I go into a theater and it's subtitled. I, I don't know. I've never watched a subtitled movie in theater. I've only watched them at home because usually subtitled movies don't make it to the market around here because it's like a Regal Cinema 8. It's only got, yeah. you know what I mean? Only, uh, I think the only movie I've ever really, really watched and paid attention to that was subtitled was uh, Train to Basan. That's a good movie. Um, but if it 
If I gotta read, I'm like, man, fuck that. Well, the problem is it's harder to pay attention to the movie because you're trying to read the dialogue. So you're looking down here to read, and then shit's going on, you know. But I guess if you watch a whole bunch of them, you get used to that. What I like, yeah, to... you do. I'm a big foreign movie snob, so I think I think you do get used to it after a while. What I thought about doing was just like watching Japanese films without subtitles and seeing if I just couldn't just learn the language eventually. <laughs> because I really want to watch Japanese kung fu movies. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to watch can. the action going on without having to. Because you, they have the audio, uh, what is it called? Dubbed? Yeah, audio. No, no, I'm talking about Ooh. like, a lot of them don't anymore. A lot, cause, cause these newer movies are coming out from China and Japan and just over in Asia in general, and it's like, man, that looks so freaking good. But I really don't want to sit here for an hour and a half reading this movie to understand what's going on because there's a lot of action in them, and even older ones that aren't dubbed. It's like, damn, that'd be a good movie. But I want to, cause, and also, you know, like if I can, if I could understand and, and get up and walk away and hear the movie. And you know what I'm saying? Because you're watching it at home. Like, I don't necessarily need to pause every movie when I get up to go get something to drink. As long as I can hear what's going on, I pretty much can get the gist of it, you know, I can, uh, if I can understand it. I don't know. Well, one movie I want to mention that uh, that I thought I was going to have to read, but then turned out it had was English dub with uh, Dead Snow. Mm. That movie was so good. Netflix is doing a lot of, of the dub movies now. Y'all notice that? Like, they're pulling these movies and saying Netflix originals, but they're fucking already you... been made somewhere else, and they're like, we'll buy the rights to that, and we'll dub it. large majority of them are Indian, which is strange to me. There's a lot of Indian stuff on uh, Netflix now. Does it... Well, a billion people live in India, right? Or yeah, around? So, I mean, if you can get into that market... Bollywood? I mean, uh, granted, there's the vast majority of them are really poor, so I'm not sure if they have, you know, uh, what so streaming yeah. and all that. But I don't know. Do we have we ever did a uh, uh, India movie on? Yes, we did. Uh, the one with the the uh, freaking a. Was it the cops? It was the house that they were at. I'm pretty sure it was Indian, and it was like the house was haunted. Uh, and the old lady was always dead. His mother was already dead. And he was there to watch his mother. I'd have to look it up, man. Uh, yeah, but we did do one. Do you know of any movies, Indian uh, or Indian uh, horror movies? No, I've I've kind of scrolled past them on the, on the Netflix. I, I stick to uh, Japanese and French, mostly. I started listening, you know, this is going off of that, not on the horror, but uh, started listening to the audio book of, uh, um, what was that, Quentin Tarantino movie? Once oh, Once Upon a Time, Time in Hollywood. Yeah, I started listening to the book. That's mm-hmm. pretty damn good. Have you read the book? No, I haven't. That's He just released that not too long ago, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I heard him on Joe Rogan talking about the book, so... It got me interested, and I, I really enjoyed that movie anyways, to how he altered reality, you know, kind of with... Yeah, uh, it was cool. Stop, pretty much, I guess, stopping the people from killing uh, with Sharon, <clears throat> Sharon Tate, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that movie's okay. It, it was a lot of nothing until it got to the very end, and then it made something. The sets were badass, though. The sets yeah. were badass. Like, I, I mean, I'll give them that, but... To me, that b- movie was fucking boring yeah. until it got to the end of it, and I was like, "Well, this was worth it, kind of." Yeah, but not every movie everyone's gonna like. Like it just, you know. Oh yeah, that so ending though, this... man, when they started fighting the hippies, God, mm-hmm. Lee, the oh, motherfuckers brutal. whooped the shit out of them people. They, they said they probably like, what is that one thing that meme where it's like in this moment? They realized they, they fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> yeah. Well, Especially, I mean, it's, it's shown previously that, you know, Brad Pitt's character could take Bruce Lee, so. Yeah. Yeah. You would, if you could take Bruce Lee. I think some hippies would have much of a chance against him. 
Oh, what about the part where he slings the dog food can and just d- annihilates the dudes? Was it a dude or a girl? I think it's a girl. Well, it's, whoever yeah, gets their face annihilated with a can of dog food. <laughs> yeah, ghost stories. Yeah, okay. I don't yeah, know. I remember you, that. You hold that up to him. He... Ghost stories. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it's about a, where the son leaves and hires someone to take care of his mom. But she's actually sleeping with a married man and come to find out the mother's been dead the whole time, but yet she's been in the house. She's a ghost. Something weird. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good movie. That, that's a Netflix yes, movie? Yes. Like you said, <laughs> Netflix seen it, took it over, and it's like, we're going to take this. And yeah, they, they, goggled, they gobbled up that market. Which I can't blame them, though. Because you have a lot of, you know, people from India that live here in the U.S. too, and all around the world. Yeah. So if you can get that out to them, then, you know, you got a market for it. Yeah. And plus, it's foreign horror movies, you know. There's a big market for it right now anyway. Does anyone else think it's weird, though, that, like, Netflix is, is uh, you know, different regions or streaming different things? Yes, 100% re- weird because uh they're actually uh shutting people down if you if you put a vpn on your on your computer and log in to get different region stuff like from europe you will get banned from netflix what's the big deal because people it's region locked i guess money wise there's some sort of money thing that goes with it it's shown in this region only you can't export it to america Unless you want to pay us this amount of dollars, you know what yeah. I mean. Like it's, yeah, and people because they want to see what's over in Europe, you know, because they got a lot of different stuff. But probably a lot more British, you know, because I'd like to see more, you know, like what they're turning out over there in the UK. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like just film shot over there. Like, what are you turning out instead of just all American with British people in it? Yeah. You know, like, I don't know. Maybe that's weird. I kind of figured that would eventually start happening. You know, a lot of the VPN services advertise with that, saying, like, you can use a VPN to watch... Uh, Anything in the world. Yeah. I mean, because you can go, you know, get on to Asia's Netflix or whatever it is over there. Maybe they're saying... I wonder if they'll put out a package where you'll pay, like, maybe... 30 bucks a month and you can get all regions or something. Probably not. You know, give that I don't know, because I would think that a a stream, no matter where it happens, counts as a stream, right? So however they divide that, you know, money-wise, like, what would be the difference? And you would think they would make more money. It's weird. Yeah. They... I guess that way you you can't get access to every single thing because if they want to bring it to America on this day, you know what I'm saying? Or they, they want to take keep this you subscribed. Exactly, and you can't go and be like, "Well, I've already watched all this." Like, and now it's finally in America, but it's like, "Well, I've already watched it." Yeah, you know, or the American things being released, which Stranger Things is probably released all over the world, wouldn't you think? Oh, I'm sure. I would think every region has it. Yeah, it's too big. Like yeah, like their Netflix original shows, because like Lupin, I don't know if that was original Netflix, but it's from France, and it's well, on that dark that dark show that was a uh, German, right? You guys remember that? It's something I don't. I remember watching it, liking it, and then like I forgot about it. But it's uh, dark. Yeah, I think it's called Dark Thriller series. Yeah, Netflix. Yep, dark. So where is it from? I thought it was German. I'm pretty yep, sure German. it's all subtitled. Yeah. yeah, it's German. Yep. Another one they probably bought the rights to? I, see, I don't, that's what's weird, dude. You, we would never know, though. You know what I'm saying? As right. far as because it being foreign, it could have been over there for two years, and they picked it up and showed it over here. Like, hey... Can we buy the rights to it to put on Netflix and then uh, 
but you can do whatever you want to with it over in Europe, but we're going to have the rights to distribute it in America. Yeah. You know, like, I guess you could probably look up the history of it, maybe. But, because I was watching that Lupin, and it's based off of books, and this guy is a thief, and he uses Lupin as his, you know, hero and how to steal shit or whatever, but I don't uh, you want to get into movie of the week? Yeah, let's let's do the movie of the week, Spiral. Yeah, uh, a criminal mastermind unleashes a twisted form of justice in Spiral, the terrifying new chapter from the Book of Saw. Uh, I waited to read your review on this till after because I didn't want any judgment. Because you know, on this, I haven't read anything about Spiral. I meant to go to the theaters and watch it, never did. Um, probably glad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, where can we? This movie opens up, and like like you said in the article, you can go read the article on tnhorror.com. Uh, I'll link it in the description. Yeah. Uh, and it opens up with the scene, you know, the guy's in a contraption. I've only, and just so we're clear, I've only seen the first Saw, like, because I just had no interest in watching the other ones. I thought the first one was good. They get pretty repetitive, right? Well, I, they do, but they also have a cool underlying story with Tobin Bell's character, I felt like. Yeah. Like, I thought it was cool, the whole series. But it's pretty cool how they come up with these fucking kills while this trap. Those are pretty awesome. And the contraptions were cool in this movie, but after that, then you have Chris Rock, uh, comedian. Chris Rock. Or Chris, yeah, Chris Rock, uh, uh, the comedian, uh, monologue comedic monologue that he had about Forrest Gump he squint too and it's just like well I guess Chris Rock's in it and it's gotta be a little funny I guess yeah they do throw some you know, comedic one liners in there but man Chris Rock trying to be a serious actor as you've seen if you're watching this you just seen what we did, did Chris Rock he likes to I guess in serious scenes in the movie it's like he's squinting or something. Well, he's thinking. But yeah, he's got his eyes closed. Real, like, yeah, yeah. And he's Think. he's trying to be all serious. Or something. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Put some glasses on. Well, my thing, like, but his inflection in his voice is like all the comedy stuff that he does when he raises his voice to be serious. And I couldn't take him serious. Like, when he grabbed dude and was like, screw you. And I'm just like, eh. It's not believable. Yeah, like yeah, the the whole like Forrest Gump intro, like I I loved that conversation, and I was hoping that that was really setting the tone for like how his character was going to be, and then it was like they threw that out the window after that. You know, he was all serious after that. Yeah. Well, but he was talking about the divorce. You know, he wasn't like trying to be. I guess it was supposed to be kind of funny when he was talking about yeah, you lady. Doing this, and you know, Pilates ain't even real. And well, yeah. my wife is doing Pilates. Oh, well, whatever you want to believe, man. You know, like, just, and I was just like, eh. And I, I don't even know if I want to break this movie down a whole lot. Well, <laughs> you know, I got the Blu ray from Lionsgate. Lionsgate, right? Yes. Yeah. They sent it to me to review the Blu ray of it, and um, the behind the scenes. They said they, they made this movie just because Chris Rock wanted to be in a Saw movie. Right. Yeah, uh, well, he wanted to re bring it back out, um, but I guess I thought he was going to have a, a a thing in, like, writing it, helping, you know. Yeah, he's but a he's not, yeah, well, he's an a produ executive producer. Well, yeah, they gave him that, that whatever. But he was also one of the ones that brought on, uh, was able to bring on uh, Samuel L. Jackson, though, I believe. In a small yeah. role, like he well, wasn't still. in the movie along, uh, but he still. did say "motherfucker" a couple times though. He, he got to, you know, uh, and it was amazing. Uh, but yeah, Chris Rock, he his character, I don't even know his name. In the uh, Banks, yeah. Ezekiel, Zeke. Uh, yeah, 
the department don't like him. It's that whole well, he ratted out one of his other guys. Well, the one the other guy's a corrupt cop, though. Yeah, well, he killed the witness because he was corrupt, and the son watched it. And once he got a new and spoilers here, uh, go watch the movie if you haven't. I'm, you probably already have if you're listening to this podcast. More likely, maybe not though. Uh, once he got the new partner, I already knew. I was just like, man, this motherfucker's been on CSI Miami ten times. <laughs> like, or you know what I'm saying? NCIS, yeah. CSI. I've already seen this uh, storyline. Already seen it. It was a, it's on TV show. This is TV show storylines. So it was a. Would you, would you say this is like a generic storyline? It wasn't original. As far as the the twist, it felt like it felt like they knew it too because yes. they tried so hard to set up Samuel L. Jackson. Yes. Like, that is the whole movie, is them setting yes. up that he is the new killer. Yeah. And and they make it so obvious that you instantly know, well, it's not going to be him, right? No. I mean, they try so hard to convince you. And, but to try to get away from that partner, the fresh, young-faced rookie, and I'm just like, man, this is some bone shit right here. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I've already yeah. seen this. Like, and on Bones, it took episodes to, I don't know if y'all ever watched Bones, but episodes to, you know, to leak out that one guy that worked in the lab with him that he was the killer. Uh, so it's just like, eh, I don't know. Uh, I liked it up until, uh, we're just going to skip ahead an hour, until the captain got caught in the own, in their own precinct. And I was just like, <laughs> I told my brother, yeah. I said, what the fuck is on that towel that he wraps around their face? Yeah. With a contraption already made in the evidence room. No, oh, no, no, no. It, it wasn't made because she walked in and didn't see it. So, therefore, he built it while she was knocked out. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, everything was believable up until then. I was just like, no, yeah. no. Did, and then you got boiling hot wax. And I was just like, this is fucking. Didn't she get her face mounted off pretty much? Yeah. And that, the, the other special effects were good. That right there, to me, I was just like, mm. okay, good. You know, I feel like I got to say, though, I, I, as a fan of all the Saw movies, like, it's a, I don't, it's a popcorn movie, right? It's like, like, after Saw 3, they just became a whatever, right? You put it on while you're tinkering with something, it plays in the background, and this, this, is an addition to that, right? Like, is it the worst movie that's ever been made? No, nah, no. But it's just a Saw movie, right? It's just a Saw movie. And when the dude got his fingers ripped off, that looked really good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. This is why I'm not into the Saw franchise, because I don't care for that, that you know, torture devices. Well, I, can, I guess Saw would be considered torture porn, right? Uh, I don't know. If, if it, yeah. Exploitation. Yeah. I I feel like it's more in the genre of torture. Yeah, it's a torture. I mean, you're ripping people's fingers off. But the, the cool thing about the Saw films is, you know, we all put ourselves in horror movies like, what would I do in that situation? Yes. Yeah. And true. Saw does a great job of that, right? Like, whoa, man, would I, you know, rip my tongue off to live or would I just let the train hit me, you know? Um, that guy decided too late. <laughs> Well, they all do. Yeah. Same like I'm like the one dude that let his fingers get ripped off, and then he gets electrocuted. I'm just like, what the fuck? He didn't have a chance. But yeah, I guess yeah. that's the point too. Even the guy at the where he, at the, his old ex partner, which was kind of stupid of Chris Rock to think that he was still alive after he looked at his back. And where do you get a glass shooter? <laughs> yeah, that part was so so ridiculous to me. I was like, where? What about what in the fuck? Would you have a glass recycling factory that has a shooter which just expels glass and shoots yeah, it what's out? the point of that? You know, but there is a brilliant, brilliant scene in Spiral, though. And it's a, a throwback to the first saw, right, where the guy's supposed to cut his foot off and he yep. can't reach the phone. I, I, and everyone that's ever seen Saw 1 said, why didn't you use the saw to get the phone? You know, to like reach it and there's the scene where chris rock's about to cut off his foot and he just kind of looks at the saw and he uses it to grab the phone and it's like okay that was pretty cool 
That was clever, right? Yeah, he used it to get the little bobby pin to unhook it. Yeah, it was like, all right, I'll give you props on that. That was that was clever. Yeah, I like that because it's kind of throwback to the original. Because he's over there trying to saw off the... Uh, yeah. The, and he's like, man, that ain't working. Oh, huh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But back, sorry, back to the glass shooter thing. Yeah, that was just the and most. To, and my brother, thing. my brother come in to the movie like thirty minutes into it, and then when the captain scene happened, he just like, man, fuck this movie. He got up and walked out. Yeah. He's like, ah, then yeah, no, it, like it was okay until then to me. So Even the I, glass shooter scene, I could see like maybe you made up a contraption. Okay, that's fine, but. You're in the fucking precinct, and nobody's answering the phone because they don't like Chris Rock's character. And, uh, and, uh, no. You know what got me, though, was after that scene was over, uh, the glass shooting, when they showed Chris Rock's face, yes. you could so tell that they just glued some glass to that motherfucker's face. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. and it, then he pulls the one out of his arm, he's like, and I was just like, but what about the shit in your face? Are you just gonna leave right there? <laughs> I, I had the same thought. And then, big but then he gets place. downstairs and he don't have any glass in his face no more. So I guess yeah. he picked it while he's going. He was going downstairs. Probably the makeup off effects camera. artist wiped it off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he still had the cuts. So. Oh yeah. Which I mean, I it's guess no, while you're walking, you're gonna pick the glass out of you. So. It's no die hard. No. Which, whenever I think of pulling glass out of a body part, I always think of oh, die man, hard. The, the feet. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was real bad. Because that's a chunk he pulled out of his foot. You know, that was. That oh, was it, it was up there pretty good. Was it uh, Bruce Willis? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was a long piece that was up in there, wasn't it? Yeah. That was. But, uh, yeah, I'm but, gonna... um, yeah, so the twist was his partner did it. And he was the kid son of the guy that got shot originally that Chris Rock snitched on his partner for. Right. And he wants to team up with and that, Chris Rock. And that didn't make any sense to me because then wouldn't that make Chris Rock a bad cop? Right. <laughs> so then wouldn't Chris Rock have to be hunted by him because he's a bad cop now? I was just like, well, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, it's just like a movie you watch and then while you're doing yeah. shit, like a rainy Saturday, Sunday movie. It's supposed to be raining today, so I don't know. So, yeah, yeah, if you own all 37 Saw movies already, you might as well buy this one. Yeah, because the, up until, you know, that one part, I was like, yeah, this is all right. It's not bad. You know, it's not the worst movie I've seen. Like, it's all right. It's okay. And then that, and I was like, eh, it's not believe- as believable anymore. This, and they even tried to, when the, the captain, like, when nobody answered the phone, oh, well, Oh, cop got attacked. It's been crazy up here. Nobody's answered the phone because of that. And I was just like, they already knew people were going to question. Already knew. Yeah. And it is so uh, stereotypical, like over the top, you know, uh, precinct captain slamming her fist down and I'm not you know, tired of your bullshit, Chris Rock. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like every every bad like detective movie you've ever seen, like the captain yelling at everyone. It's so over the top. And then the one guy was the the typical uh, uh, slob detective. You yeah. know, had his shirt untouched and he looked just rough and he's overweight and it's just like he's a slob of the group and the bad cop. And I'm just like, I wonder if there's actual precincts like that. Like, you know, you could just walk around with your shirt unbuttoned and your undershirt yeah. showing. Because, I mean, I've watched a lot of 48 hours, or the first 48, and none of them look like it. <laughs> no, nope, I've never seen it, no. <laughs> so, Maybe, the, was it at the end of the day? And you're know. just like, fuck it. I'm but gonna... I guess it is hot, though, because they do say it's a heat wave, and that tensions are running high because of that. And then, at least they did have them with sweat. Well, Chris Rock had sweat on him. I'm not sure about anybody else. Well, and that guy, too, he had the obvious scar that as soon as you saw him, you know, later in the movie, they're going to explain to you how he got that yes. scar. You know, and sure and then enough. they did, and I was like, well, that's how he got the scar. Oh, man, he really <laughs> had some vendetta out against those Ezekiel yeah. Banks. Like, yeah, he's real mad at him. Yeah. So, 
I remember right, though, it ends like, yeah, it ends like there could be a sequel, right? Yes. Because the, the killer don't die. Yes. Or it's right, and Ezekiel Banks lives. Yes. Yeah. So, but I don't even want that, like, don't, I don't even want that killer to come back. No, it, it no, it's not as, because, well, you're only focusing on one bad group, right? So you could, so you're not expanding outside of that group. And then when they, be, like he was saying, well, if we kill enough cops, sprinkle little bones here and shed some blood here, then, then they'll straighten up and be good. I mean, I feel like. Then where do you go like, after that? There's, I think there's cool stories you could do with Saw lore. I really do. Like, if there was a, like, cult that, like, worshipped the John Kramer guy, like, I would get into that. Like, you know, maybe there's this whole organization building contraptions and, you know, trying to yeah. rid society of whatever their mission is. But that would be crazy. Be tough thing. They just had a whole, that. like you said, a whole society of people that uh, build traps and stuff. Well, it's just that Saw is like so exhausted the copycat thing. Yeah. And and when has a copycat thing ever like worked well in film? Like it sucked in Friday the thirteenth. You know, it it Halloween did it too, right? They they had a fake Michael Myers at some point. And then yeah. they did the whole psychic what, Buster thing. Rhymes? <laughs> <laughs> Buster Rhymes needs to be in the next Saw movie with Chris Rock. Jacked up Buster Rhymes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess I'd end up having to watch it. If it's a sequel? Yeah. That's how bad it is. <laughs> oh, damn. So, yeah, that's Saw. Um, the book, or Spiral, Book of Saw. So, go check it out. It's got thumbs up from all of us. <laughs> it's like this. It's like this. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. You ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah. They're on the contraption that Samuel L. Jackson's on, right? Like the door opens. Oh, right man. There. That contraption and all the blood in the. What are you going to get? It? I was just like, that motherfucker oh, would already yeah. be dead with all that blood that's drained out of him. He wouldn't even be talking. He'd be like, Ugh. I love, I love that he's like suspended in the air and the SWAT team sees him like, you know like a marionette raised this busted ass shotgun so they light yeah, him up and but like, the the funny thing is too is they seen him when they come in that he was suspended yeah and then the lights changed and now they can't they don't know yeah that it's he's him. got a gun yeah and yeah they, they got a little trigger happy didn't they yeah <laughs> Shot him ten thousand times I guess that's what cops I was do. that was that um uh, what is it called uh what is, what do they call, what does George Romero do in movies? What's that thing? I have no clue, man. What that thing is? Social. Oh, social justice. No, not well, that, but so, oh, social commentary. commentary. Yeah, there you go. Social yeah. commentary. Well, that's what I took it as. Is like, well, this is what cops do. They shoot ten thousand times into somebody that has a gun, and they were so shooting shotguns. They were shooting shotguns and fucking just fully automatic weapons. I'm just sitting there thinking, hmm, like, after you shot for, like, five, you know, three or four seconds, two seconds, it'd probably be over. Like, but what about them? I, I, thought they, I thought they kind of dipped their toe in it. But can I also ask a question? What's with, like, the rebel cop always having, like, some badass muscle car instead of, like, the assigned, you know, cop car? Well, like you said, this is the... <laughs> Chris Rock was probably like, "Well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be in this movie, I want a badass car like some other movies got badass cars." So I ain't driving a... no Impala. Yeah, I ain't driving a motherfucker, no <laughs> motherfucker Camaro. But like you said, it was stereotypical cop movie. Like, yeah, they try to make it like a cop movie, but it was soft. I don't know. It did try. It did try really hard to be a cop movie. Yeah, it tried. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I guess that's all we got, yo. Yep. We out. Peace. Now it's time to say goodbye to the basement guys again. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality. 
to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Or that is, spooks and spells. Take your shirt off. Y'all come back now, you hear?